Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors Channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from a lovely little Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's early, and if you want to fight against the tyrannical government that is trying to take away everything you have, well, you should own some Bitcoin. And um, that being said, we're going to jump into some price action, take a look, kind of the macro schedule. All eyes on Dixie right now. Dixie is just a... Um, a measurement of the dollar against a basket full of currencies. And it has been uh, quite bullish since we broke this trend line to the upside. And um, all the way, you know, since the, the peak in January, notice the peak in the dollar was met with the bottom in Bitcoin and the bottom in NASDAQ. So if you can see that is, call it uh, December, October, January. Okay, right around this area. Um, Let's pull it on up and kind of what was giving us a bias for the dollar to bounce at some point? Well, it's macro bullish, number one. Number two, um, at some point, we usually go back to the 0.5 of the 618 for a bit of a retracement and we play the game of lower high or not. So let's pull it out a little bit further and take a look on the weekly time frame. see if we have any hidden bullish divergence coming back from this pivot right here and that is going to be three drives on the weekly time frame and uh, three drives of hidden bullish divergence, that is. So what do we have? One, two, three higher lows in price and one, two, three lower lows in RSI. So where does that give us a bounce to the top side of the range? Could you call that the top side of the range? perhaps, um, or could you call this the top side of the range? Either way, I'm expecting dollar to uh, retrace back to the 0.5 of the 618, giving up the points to the bulls, uh, excuse me, points to the bears. When the dollar goes up, risk assets typically go down, i.e. NASDAQ down 135. And that's why it's so important to you know, kind of understand these basic underlying fundamentals. Um, in, in TA and whatnot. But just this morning, as the ISM manufacturing numbers came out, we had a green giant, giant green girthy candle to the upside. And why was that? Well, S&P Global Services PMI came out bearish for the dollar, lower than expected. However, most of the under uh, the underlying you know metrics there in ISM came out bullish for the dollar. Interesting, we have a 17-week bill auction so 17 weeks you get five and three three percent not bad there and um do we have anything coming out tomorrow now typically uh we've got about two weeks left until the quadruple witching what is the quadruple witching um quadruple witching it's where all options and futures contracts expire at the same time so that's coming on on the 15th. Okay, this particular last hour, sometimes specifically referred to as the witching hour for the year 2023, the date September 15th and December 15th. Another important aspect to note is the quadruple witching and closely related term triple witching. Uh, that didn't tell me exactly uh, what quadruple witching day this is a options, expirations, and futures contracts, and that's in stocks, Bitcoin, and um, some other asset clat. It's all happening on the 15th. Hedge fund managers are going to adjust their portfolios during that time, and <clears throat> that should bring some liquidity, much needed liquidity into the market, which we don't have right now. Checking in on more underlying market dynamics as I'm going to sign back in. This thing never wants to let me sign in. Want to do that one. And it won't fill my password. Come on. That didn't work. Let's give it another shot. Oh, come on. Can we get lucky here? Nope. No luck. No luck whatsoever. I'm going to try this again. Boom, and then I'm going to hit fill. And if I don't get this on this one, I'm going to give up on it. 
It's not working. Okay. Not looking at an open interest today. Uh, let's check out the fear and greed index. People are moderately fearful. I would say not, not yet in, we're in the slight fear zone. <clears throat> okay. So nothing there. Dixie's looking bullish. Risk assets expected to come down and well, uh, short-term target for Ethereum, which I've been enjoying as of late. I'll just pull it up on my screen here shortly. So I'm um, targeting a move down to the bottom side of the range here uh, for a test at about 16. Let's test out that wick at 1608. I think that would be good. You're breaking this range of the downside. You got some bearish divergence and well, measure move takes us down to the 1618 at 1614 for a bounce. Do I think it stops there? Probably not. Especially if Dixie wants to continue to the upside. Uh, last thing, I'm not even going to go into the liquidation levels today. So let's take a look at Bitcoin, 25.6. And stumbling at the moment. <clears throat> and as Bitcoin dominance is going down, Ethereum seems to be holding up a little bit better at the moment. Um, targeting a move to the bottom side of the range, coming in at 25.3. That would look good. And this does look like a clear move to the downside here as volume is starting to pour in on these 15 minute candles to the downside, giving us the bearish bias. How did Solana do after the Visa card announcement? The entire move got faded. I figured that was the case. Solana giving it up. Oh, poor Solanas. Why did you do that to yourself? Um, let's see what else do we got here on the chopping block. Let's see if that, those trades will hit as we are speaking, um, getting into, um, back onto Bitcoin and more of the macro look, which is what I wanted to talk about really quick. As we know, we're coming into Thursday, Thursday, typically a down day for crypto. Why is that? I don't know. Um, but just go back and look at all the Thursdays. You'll see a little bit of a red Thursday. Um, Dixie on the weekly has the hidden bullish divergence, which is a very powerful thing. And perhaps could send it. Does that look like a W2? No, it doesn't. It does not. So breakout retest um, could be the case. Hidden bullish divergence, one, two, three. Top side of the range would be all the way up here at 113 and as china has announced they are no longer going to be you know uh, stimulating uh they they've basically said let's let the market go I, I i don't know the exact quote here but from what i heard they're not going to print money they're not going to lower rates at the moment they're going to let the economy die for whatever reason that is um and dixie again on the weekly time frame looking bullish on the monthly time frame are we going to have a chance to put in some hidden bullish divergent? Look at that. Look at that dollar just ripping to the upside. Not helping out our good old friend Bitcoin or stocks or any of that uh, for today. But essentially, what are we looking at on the monthly time frame? And we did have this call way back here for a measure move up to 142, which would be absolutely insane. Uh, but... What do you see here on the monthly time frame? Very uh, higher term time frame. You've got a slew of uh, higher lows and higher highs, and another higher low, which will be confirmed this month with any kind of a closure, really here or, or higher. And that gives the odds. And, and notice this as well. You know, uh, volatility has been declining, right? So after an explosive move to the upside. When volatility begins to decline, well, price should retrace. And now, as if volatility can pick back up, well, that would uh, help us out for that upside target. But um, again, we, 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 we really don't want to see Bitcoin close above that box on a daily or a weekly time frame, let alone a monthly. But um, just... Something to keep our eyes on as we know when Dixie goes up, typically risk assets are going to take a hit. Checking in on Tether Dominance, another one going around the interwebs. You can see the monthly looks pretty bullish there. Uh, the 
date in the, let's see what the weekly looks like. Uh, weekly looks bullish as well, grinding up against the top side of the, you know, top side of the range. The more we hang out here, the more likely it is to break to the upside. And you can also see the RSI is heading back to the bullish control zone after getting rejected there. Low volatility, momentum to the upside, and uh, weekly looks like it wants to lift off. Now, last time this happened, credit to Crown on this one, pointed this one out. The last time this happened, we had this massive ascending triangle and broke it to the upside. Well, what happened? Um, and we were watching this on the channel, but uh, where is the measure move take us off of that? Uh, if we measure at 50%, boom. So uh, definitely uh, lines up with our target there for the measure move, giving us, uh, you know, additional bearish biases there. Uh, tether dominance goes up, what happens? If tether dominance goes up, people are selling their altcoins to buy tether coins. Just another underlying market dynamic we like to look at. Um, what else do I want to bring up here? Um, but da -da -da. you know, bottom line is guys, I'm still bullish on Bitcoin. I still think we are in for an amazing run going into perhaps the end of September, perhaps the, uh, last quarter of the year. But, um, I don't suspect that, uh, this, this area, this trend line gets violated, um, or, or closed below, uh, kind of this level right here. Wicks down are okay, completely okay, uh, but not any kind of closures below this low, uh, coming in at, call it 22,000 on the weekly, on the daily, um, on the daily, you know, we're still, we're still, uh, just, barely holding on to the kind of higher low structure here. So this hasn't, uh, hasn't completely blown out. I'm sorry, it, <laughs> the higher low structure on the weekly time frame is still intact on the daily. It's down pressure is down. And, um, as volatility begins to expand momentum is to the downside 25, 844. So Average move on a daily volatility expansion, which to be fair, we already got one expansion. Do we get the second one to the tune of 20% uh, from where we're at today? 20%, let's say 15% gets you here. 20%, 23% gets you there. So another thing kind of playing into the narrative. And now if we do cross back up above 25,845, that would look bullish and momentum would flip to the upside. Where's that number? 25.8. So we are very, very close to flipping daily momentum back to the upside. Where's that number? 25.8.95. So that was yesterday's high. And can uh, we get a little more bleeding out in the markets? All right, let's check in. So we took a look at Bitcoin and we're saying, hey, look, the four hour range is likely going to get the next you know, decent break. But right now, all the smaller term time frames, shorter term, when I'm talking about below a four hour, um, they are gearing up for shorter term downside. Okay, but the four hour range until this range is broken on a four hour, 26.2 to the upside, 25.3 to the downside. Well, I imagine we're going to do some more ranging, some more Sandpaper rain, some more grinding it out and boring people to death. We want to draw open interest in to the market. Let's see if I can find this open interest indicator. Open interest. Let's see if that works. Boom. Did we get it? That didn't work. All right. I guess we'll try it again another time. All right. So four hour pressure onto the downside as Dixie's ripping the upside, not looking, you know, looking like it's setting up for that uh, downside move. And what else did I see here on a Bitcoin? Uh, to me, you can see a bit of an M formation, which has formed. And now we have closed below the middle peak. What am I talking about? The M formation here. Boom, 
lower high, lower low, and um, there is your M. So where's the technical target on an M? I would say it lines up something like this. It's a little bit farther, 25, 547 for a bounce. And then look at that, 2618 coming in right at our other target. So a really volatile move is going to get us moved. You know, our medium term volatile move is going to get us back to this line. And you can see that uh, volatility is beginning to get maxed out on the 15 minute time frame. So mean reversion bounce. Um, and as long as we're, you know, hanging out below these lows on the 15 minute uh, pressure on the downside and probably going to head down to that 25.3 target. Okay, I think I've uh, run the gamut on Bitcoin. Let's check out ETH Bitcoin as well, which uh, did have a kind of a interesting breakdown and then retest of the falling wedge, rising wedge, rising channel. And that's why I think Ethereum has held up uh, okay in comparison to Bitcoin as of late. Um, other than that, I think that's ETH Bitcoin. Um, as long as we're holding you know, below this trend line, this could just be you know, seen as a retest after breaking down. Um, as long as we're below this level, then I'd expect Bitcoin to continue to outperform Ethereum. And probably over some time, this measure moved to, uh, to take shape. And that's where we're looking for some altcoin action. We'll get into that another day. I think um, that's it for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and any other coins people want me to do right now. I know XRP is going for the full retrace down to this trend line here. Um, that'll look good. That looks very, very tempting. Um, and I think we did call it out on the channel, guys. We said after this pump, we we're going to get the full retrace. I wish I only took the whole trade myself. Um, XLM is the sister to XRP and is showing a bit more downside displeasure uh, action right now. Momentum is crossed to the upside. We'll cross down below 1138. 1138. So it's got some work to do there. Probably got to get down a little bit more, but it looks like it is uh, it is going to get pushed to the downside. Uh, next level down on the 15 minute is going to be 11,736. How's my Cardano doing? Cardano getting ripped in his face. Perfect sell off the green 55 and a 15 minute death cross. <laughs> Not too powerful there. You can see after this four hour death cross right here, when the green 55 crosses the 20, uh, green 55 crosses the purple 200 exponential to the downside. There was your death cross. There was your retest, perfect retest and boom. That was the, uh, that was the spot right there. And now we are kind of doing the same thing here, putting in another lower high off the green 55. I do imagine this one does test the bottom side of the range one more time at 25 cents. That's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a blessed and highly favored rest of your day. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time. Take care.